Blockchain is the talk of the financial services business, but what will be its real impact? In this next chapter, City's Ruth Wandhover, who is head of market and regulatory strategy, separates the reality from the hype. So blockchain is obviously making a big impact in the financial services industry. I mean, are we at a stage now where we can start to see a bit of an outline of, of what that impact is likely to be? I think we've really gone through the last two years of hype and experimentation and what we haven't yet seen are some applications that really deliver the benefits that people have talked about. The intrinsic value of this technology is of course to bring trust which allows to remove complexity. And so I think we are starting to see in the next few years smaller applications that are going to fix some meaningful problems in a way that not the whole ecosystem will be impacted, just to allow for a test environment still to a certain extent. And over time, we will hopefully move to a more coordinated community approach. Because the real value in these solutions is when a whole market or potentially the global market does it together. Because with most transaction banking topics, we're in a network industry. So it's not enough. So, so, it, so if we say it's going to take out uh, or be applied in sort of specific areas, I mean, do we have an idea what those areas are likely to be? Well, we've, we've seen it in the sort of private placement market to see can we make that market more efficient and leverage the technology to allow for better settlement and better customer experience. We're starting to see some ideas in the post-trade space to think about, you know, can we make the environment less complex, less costly? I think in the payment space, we are still at an early stage because despite Bitcoin, which is of course a very unique private currency solution, we are not yet at a stage where we're moving into central bank issued digital money that will require a full blockchain capability. But we may see some elements in central banking like issuance and distribution of cash, which could actually leverage the technology to make parts of central banking, for example, more efficient. So again, you see the shift from the intrinsically sort of de distributed decentralized amount to a more centralized model where people are looking at making the centralized model more efficient in the future. All right, so what steps do we now need to take then in order to reach that centralized model so we can change the whole industry? Yes, and I think there are some centralized and decentralized solutions if we look more at land registries and other types of registries where people just need to have the same data. So again, a solution that provides everyone with the same data they need, that's the beauty. And if you look at important services like payments or clearing and settlement, of course that centralized element comes necessarily in because you need fiat settlement and settlement security. So I think we have sort of almost two different business models. One in the decentralized space where we can test applications like land registry, countries like Ghana or Sweden with real estate that are actually trying to apply it. We've seen a more centralized application already in Singapore with TradeSafe, really trying to fix a specific trade fraud problem where the government has given the support and therefore we are in, a, in an environment where the technology can be tested in a controlled way and centralized and I think we will see more governments in the next few years looking at specific areas such as the UK government looking at distribution of grants to actually apply the technology to make their own processes that they need to execute more efficient going forward. So what do you see as the opportunities for the banks in all this? Well, for the banks, of course, there's this massive opportunity to redesign and simplify the back office, uh, which is something that hasn't happened for the last 20, 30 years. Uh, and again, there's a lot of promise and we need to concentrate on those use cases and applications where real value can be brought. So it's not about just saying this is a great technology and I apply it to anything I see to get a better outcome. It requires a very good understanding of business processes, of technology, of regulatory regimes and compliance, because all of this hangs together. And that's why some applications may initially be just in a certain area within the bank as opposed to impacting the whole technology stack of the bank which is of course a legacy stack um, and that will take time to morph into a new system so we will see more specific applications to see how that interacts before we see a sort of whole scale uh, application in practice. So you mentioned there the whole regulatory and compliance issue uh, I mean where do you think we're going to go on that. Um, are, are regulators coming to terms with blockchain? Yes, it's interesting because obviously most regulators around the world had some issues with digital currencies, private digital currencies, Bitcoin and all the other altcoins, yeah. particularly for law enforcement fraud. And of course, now we have Monero and we even have malware and Monero, so illegal currencies with illegal activities. But of course, blockchain as the underlying technology is the interesting part. And what we very positively note is that a lot of governments around the world are coming around to that evolution that we moved on from private digital currencies 
which have all sorts of issues, to a blockchain uh, distributed ledger environment where we can actually improve KYC, improve AML, if we find the right kind of design and permutation to allow for exchange of data without compromising data security, data protection. And I think in that instance, we look at blockchain distributed ledger, in ancillary technologies, Internet of Things, cloud, because they all actually hang together and therefore security, data protection are very important parameters that need to be resolved and people are starting to look at that area and working on it. It takes time, but once everything is included, I think we will get to a much better place in terms of efficiency. Ruth, thank you very much. Thank you.